petition regarding the council's handling of the traffic route in Canterbury. Thank you, Mayor. Just a quick uh, introduction to this because this is only the second time this has happened at the full council. So, um, just to remind members what the procedure is. We have a petition scheme which is part of our constitution. Um, and that provides that if any member of the public presents a petition to the council with more than 3,000 signatures, it triggers a debate at council. Normally a petition is, um, is presented to council and it is then referred to the appropriate committee or to the executive. But when 3,000 or more signatures are uh, gathered and presented to the council, then we have a debate here. Um, the, um, the petition that we have this evening from uh, David Barwick, uh, I think is on the agenda. Um, it's to do with um, the justification on the agenda, which is that, I quote, this petition reflects the anxiety about the Council's handling of traffic routing in Canterbury. Um, and that's what the petition is supposed to be to do with, so it would be as well, uh, perhaps, for all members to speak to that. The petition scheme provides for the petition organiser to speak to the petition for three minutes, um, but then it's a matter of councillors to have the debate. The normal um, amount of time that's allowed for a petition debate in the Constitution is 15 minutes, um, and that would normally include the petition organiser's presentation, but I think given the uh, scale of interest, well, they may wish to propose to council a slightly extended time. I am proposing that we have a debate tonight for 30 minutes, if that's in agreement with all councillors. Can I have a vote on that, please? Mm. Thank you. That will not include the three minutes that Mrs. Farber speaks. That will be separately. So three minutes for the petitioner and then 30 minutes for the debate. Three minutes? I'm going to be very strict tonight. Um, it will be only 30 minutes for the debate. And that will include any amendments as well. So 30 minutes will be in total. And I do remind members of the public, this is a council meeting, not a public meeting. And um, I expect you all to behave civil tonight, please. And if there is any bad behaviour, I will stop the meeting and have removed. So let's behave this, please, everybody. This is
Being scared to challenge a leader makes corruption easier as spineless executive members become obliged to keep silent. Finally, being surrounded by yes men and women too fearful to challenge mean that leaders lose touch with the constituents they were voted in to represent. That is why we fought against traffic chaos for residents and traders. We fight against the development of our open spaces and the closure of our museums, the scandalous rent increases to pensioners with beach huts. We fight for democracy while you stifle it. We are often dismissed as a loud minority, but what is indisputable here is that 568 people voted you in as councillors on Gilney, and almost seven times that amount now want you out. That's why I earned the right to speak, but we have earned the right to a debate. It was wise to extend this from the minimum 15 minutes, but the chair must allow councillors, other than her fellow Tories, to speak. That way a motion can be put forward by those in this chamber who agree with us that rule by executive must be replaced with a return to the democratic, um, democratic committee system. It would be very wise for the Lord Mayor to do so, or there will surely be uproar in this house. Thank you for listening.
called a weak leader. I'm happy to be called a weak leader. A weak leader because it was a leader who could not make decisions without the rest of the executive in a public forum and who held working groups to discuss every issue to ensure that every member of the council had some say. And then the resolutions of those working groups would come to the executive and de facto those working groups would be committed. Now we have a the executive system where the working groups are treated with nothing but contempt. The work is done behind the scenes and all that the working groups are for is so that the schemes agreed by the leader with council officers and his fellow executive members can be rubber stamped and some facade of um, acceptability and justification because of them because the working group when they meet, despite the fact that decisions have already been taken, are all part. I'll finish with one thing, Lord Mayor. I remember your mentor. Marion Atwood, she was a great woman. Yes. And I'm indebted to Kenshi Kazak today for printing the letter that she wrote. Yes. Sir, several disturbing things are happening at the moment that suggest all is not right within Canterbury City Council. In its format, the council is led by an all-powerful executive committee imposed by the Labour government. This means that backbenchers like myself have very little involvement in making decisions. The previous committee system may have been laborious, but at least it was seen by the public to be open, above board and accountable. A cabinet system with portfolio holders may be fine in Westminster, but at grassroots level, it's a joke. People want their elected representatives to make decisions and to speak for them. Now we have a hierarchy of ten, who my electorate don't know and didn't vote for. <coughs> Marion Atwood was much loved by everyone in this chamber. She was the leader of the Conservative group. She speaks from beyond the grave. I think we should listen to her words. Okay. <laughs>
question we need to ask ourselves tonight, Lord Mayor, is why? Why are so many of our local residents here tonight? Why have they come out on a cold January evening to be here? And I can answer that for you. Simply because all of them, every one of them, are concerned about the way this city, their towns and this district is run. Taking the Westgate Towers trial, we went through 18 months of a trial where residents continuously came up to me and my colleagues telling us about the impact it was having on their lives. But most importantly, the fact that nobody in power was listening to them. Nobody was taking on board their concerns, and all they were described as was anecdotal. That is poor form, Lord Mayor. But if you think that this is just about the Westgate Towers, which it is, quite importantly, well, make no mistake, it extends much further than that. I look around me tonight and I see people here concerned about the sale of Kingsmead Field, concerned about the closure of museums, concerned about the treatment of beach huts in Whitstable. I could go on. But at the heart of the matter is the way in which our city and our district and our towns are run. Lord Mayor, this petition calls for members of the executive to go. We call for the entire executive system to go. A system... A system that concentrates far too much power in few two hands. A system that takes away powers from backbenchers, duly elected by their residents. A system that in recent years has run roughshod over the concerns of our local residents. And we wish to replace that with a committee system which will disperse powers back, we will give powers back to our newly elected local councillors, backbench councillors, from all parties. But above all, we'll help to regain that link that has been lost in recent years, the link between this council and its local residents. And it can be summed up in one word, trust. The trust has gone, and we need to find it back again before it's too late. <coughs> now you can ignore what I'm saying tonight. You may choose to ignore what other councillors say. But if this district is run and continues to be run in the way it is at the moment, you will not be able to ignore the views expressed at the ballot box in 16 months' time. Yeah. Yeah. When I'm ready can I just remind you, you are taking time off the 30 minutes, so can you make your point, please? Well, my point is this, Lord Mayor, thank you. It is time for change in our district. It is time to change the way our district is run, to get away from this unrepresentative form of government and go back to a more democratic style and in so doing give our residents here tonight and elsewhere the transparent and democratic form of government that they deserve. Thank you.
only at the time when there's public consultation. And that's a disgraceful situation. That was never ha how it was envisaged that it would work. And it's time for this present lot to get, get shot of it. And it's not good enough to say, I'm not going to stand for election. I won't get involved, I just campaign. That's the easy way out, and it has a cost. I'm reminded of the words of Plato. One of the penalties for refusing to participate in politics is that you end up being governed by your inferiors. Oh. Oh. Is that it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was back a few split, but... Who's aiming at me? <laughs> what was that? 30 minutes out of the set. Lord Mayor, that's a shame. It's one of the best debates I've had. And can I say what a relief it is, that at least just for once, one of the Conservative councillors has actually stood up and joined in. And not just sat still and voted. Now, there's a couple of things I'd like to say. That's a lot half an hour. Ashley, you said there's uh, not a whip in your group. But I know, you know, that every year your group selects a whip. And the whip is Jenny. And you call Councillor Sam for the whip. And her job is to whip you. 
So to say, <laughs> you don't have a wig in the Conservative group, this power pretty well. I'm glad you raised it, you've not forgotten. I am willing to bet, I am willing to bet that tonight you will find that when the Lord Mayor calls for those against my amendment, every single Conservative hand will go up as though there is a piece of string. <laughs> <laughs> And they were the two committees you see. <laughs> so clearly you've argued in your own yeah. point. <laughs> it is simply the case that when the executive system was introduced by the government, I fear they did not understand the workings of local government. Mm -hmm. And local government has taken the executive system and created what can only be described as a dictatorship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that have lost touch with the public and we have evidence of you here we have evidence of thousands of people signing petitions do you know in the old days we had no one come to council meetings because we just used to agree we'd debate, we'd discuss, we'd take a vote and now we have packed public galleries almost every week a council a council is a council of the people for the people. This council is not a council of the people, it is an elite. An elite who sit in secret, make decisions arbitrarily, do not consult, and when they do consult, uniformly ignore what the public have said and don't shake your head at me, Council Gilby. On the case of the Westgate, the perfect example, where 16% in the last consultation said they were in favour of it and you declared that the majority were. <laughs> it's very simple. It's very simple. If you don't listen tonight, the next election will be fought on one issue. The one issue is whether or not people want an undemocratic executive or want an open committee system where every voice is heard. You have the chance tonight to create that, to take the sting out of that argument, to all of you come on board and take part in the democratic process. Or you can entrust those who have clearly lost the faith of the public. It's a simple question. I don't mind how you vote on A. It's meaningless. To be honest, I don't expect Conservative members to vote on B that their fellow Conservatives must resign. But think carefully how you vote on C, a return to the committee system. Because a return to the committee system is what the public have asked you for. And, oh, you know, some, who, who's not asked you for it? Is there anyone here? Not. Darren, don't sit there and Come on, me. Me. You have no answer to these questions. Don't shout <laughs> some. All the people who are talking have asked you for it. Don't be deaf. Listen to the public. Please. Yeah. Darren, yeah. 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 Every one of you has a responsibility as an elected councillor to represent your local residents. They've asked for a committee system, now vote for it. Strongly, strongly, the executive 
was also given the option of having elected mayors. Most of it was the same, and arguably elected mayors is, is if you wish, a very different proposition to a leader and executive. We have a whip, yes. Jenny has the great option of ha yes. actually having... Excuse me, if I tell you once more, I will stop the meeting and you will be asked to leave. Thank you. <laughs> stupid. Actually, uh, and I see, yes, yeah, she is. is. Very stupid. Yeah, I agree. I'm just stupid. The number of councillors that we have attending various committees, some actually tend to turn up, and we have all sicknesses, and I don't need to deal with them. That's what a whip does. That's about it. No, actually, it's absolutely right. In Nelson, we have been whipped. I've never whipped. No one's ever whipped in the Conservative Party. And often when you have a can I just say that you, know, you, you, you keep on inventing some of these things, you have to be careful. You, you're actually getting yourself into a situation which is well and truly this amendment has got nothing whatsoever to do with that, with that petition. That was not in the petition. The, the, the agenda system was not in the petition. Right, it's all about, which we'll come back to, I hope soon, it's all about the Westgate trial. The no, committee no, no, it's about the executive. It's about the executive. executive. The committee system has its advantages and its disadvantages. It Debate. is intriguing and, I, intriguing, and I know there is a, a, an increasing number, perhaps, of councils now looking at going back to the committee system, but the overwhelming majority of councils in this country are being run by executive and by uh, executive and by leader. And I will come back to this in my rounding up when we're talking about the subject we should be talking about. I will come back to that then to explain some of the things that, that have happened and why that system at the moment is about the only system that is going to work for the moment. It may change in the future. And if you want a committee system, then by all means come up at the next election. Don't change in midstream like this is wrong. Right, we will now take a vote. Brian, can you read out the amendment? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we took A as being the acknowledges that the differences in interpretation exposed at the Westgate Sir Dunstan's trial. A small b after reflection, the council accepts that the executive will genuinely have problems concerning about the city's congestion and pollution problems and therefore acted with the best of intentions at all times. That was A, I believe. Well, and B, we have B, which is the leader and members of the executive design. And C, council moves away from the executive system and to a committee system. Now, Lord Mayor, may I request that on C, we should be voted on separately, I trust that will be, we have a recorded vote. Are you happy to take all three to be taken individually? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Motion. Um, so really, I think the amendment is the addition of B to C. So we would take a recorded vote on B, then we would take a recorded vote on C. Just C. So we would take a vote on B and a recorded vote on C. Depending on the outcome of that, we may return to the original motion and take a vote on that. So well, I think you need a vote on uh, the resignation of the leader and executive element first. Can I have all those in favour of the resignation? Were you wet? Those in favour of the, the results are 15 in favour and 31 against. Surprise, surprise. So it is being lost. Can we take... So the recorded vote of all Mary's where uh, Matthew will call out the names of 
each uh, councillor, in alphabetical order, and you will say whether you are for or against the amendment to produce, um, to propose a change to the committee system. Okay, so the, the amendment is that the council moves away from the executive system and to a committee system. Councillor Austin, for or against? Against. Uh, uh, Baker? Bulldog? For the amendment. Bellamy? Against. Yeah. Pissett? Against. Bright? Against. Yeah. Bull? For. Byford? Against. Yeah. Cartwright? For. Clark? Against at the present time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, Andrew Cook? Against. Your bets, mate. Simon Cook? Against. Craig? Against. Dixie? For. Doyle? Against. Eden Green? For. Edwards? Against. Ellis? Against. Fitter? Against. Flaherty? For. Flanagan? For. Gilby? Against. <laughs> Against. Harrison? Against. Hurst? For. House? Against. Law? Lee? Against. Linfield? For. McCall? For. Morgan? Against. O'Dee? Against. Perkins? For. Ruby? Against. Samper? Against. Sonics? Against. Staley? For. Ann Taylor? Abstained. Abstained. Catherine Thomas? Again. Todd? Pickers? Vickery James? Against. Waters? Against. Westgate? Against. Williams? Four. Wood? Four. And Batten?
given to a debate, so therefore you can't, I'm afraid, have to agree and change that position that Council voted for those That's what I understand. Mayor's the chair and got the special. Councillor Gilman, if you could summarise, please. Well, safe. He's not even elected. Councillor Gilman, if you could summarise, please. Thank you. Can you smell his arse up it's all about democracy, isn't it? Resign. Just a few moments. That's what we're We still haven't solved that problem as of this moment. And it's going to be for the future of Canterbury and its city that this is going to fall. And believe me, it will fall again. Not in my time, but it will fall again, and not in the time of this council. It will come back, and it will be something that has to be dealt with at some stage. Now, in addition to that, we have no direct managerial responsibility over the roads and pavements. So what happened on this? Yes, but we are being accused of mishandling this. We are being accused of doing something in there, which, which as you know, from the decision taken by the County Council in March and the decision taken by the County Council in December, quite clearly demonstrate this was a County Council. The County Council were fully behind this, as were most of the opposition, because as as those papers and all those documents and all those plans went through camp, they went through locality boards, they went through the overview, they passed scrutiny before they got to the executive and the joint transport board, everyone approved that traffic program that we had. We then followed up and went through apart from the local council. Apart from the local council. A traffic regulation order does not require public that's the whole point of a trial. And that is a county council decision. It is not ours. Let's be very, very clear. So let me get this clear. You're actually saying that we somehow mishand mishandled something that was the responsibility of the county council more, more than it was our responsibility. <laughs> so you could have done any more. Not me, Gov. Members of the public, I will not ask. Any more? Please be quiet, so we can get this debate finished. Thank you. I thought the debate was finished. We've run out of time. It's because you won't give us touch today. That's not something designed to try and deal with Gangster's problems. Yes, it's creating problems. Yes, there was, but there was a huge volume of material and a huge volume of work that's been done by the county officers. Now, I will not criticise a single officer on this, by the way, on any of this that went on. The, the, the county officers, in particular, but also our own officers but actually assiduously trying to make sure that in addition to what was happening at Westgate, everything would then work out with a whole series of changes around the Ring Road and right around the city of Canterbury and other things. At the moment, as far as I'm aware, that has all gone, every bit of it. So we don't know where the future lies on this. I made a promise, an undertaking, at the start of the, of the term that we have, the region now is coming to an end in a few months' time. I made a promise that I, my priority was traffic and congestion. We had high pollution levels, we had traffic problems. We've only got, uh, uh, and I'm very pleased, in fact, that, West, that the Lower St. Dunstans is relatively clear of traffic because you've got no buses. Thousands, thousands of people can no longer get to where they want to get at that end of the city. Thousands, and including a lot of people, a lot of people who are disabled. What you've got to do on this is 
prompted for <laughs> just, finally, just finally, before I sit down, since 2008, this council, the whole council, the executive office, the, the council obviously had the responsibilities of which I don't think any other council has ever faced. We have had to cut staff, we've had to cut our budget, we are continuing to do that. We've got six every other council. Every council has done that. Every toy council is doing it. Every council is doing it. Every council is doing it. Every council is doing it. Everybody else, I'm not blaming anybody for that except what's happening for the previous council. Yes. Everybody else is doing it. Oh, 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 what I'm saying is that Look, the yellow actually lights actually on, yeah. on one occasion by the leader of the opposition. We say this is the most difficult time yeah, we've ever had. The other thing that you may not know that has changed, or perhaps you should know, is that in fact now the executive and the leader have responsibility and have lobbying powers directly with ministers. That involves an incredible amount of work and time to get these things right for the benefit, for the benefit of the whole of the minister. What I'm saying is this council in the, since 2008, the argument before that, has been very successful at most things that it did. And I include, I'm sorry, I include the trial in that. No one agrees. Where are you living? I'm sit down at this moment, telling you very, very clearly, Never, never like underestimate. Like never, never. Yeah. 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 Anybody can step into this position or any of these other positions with ease and not face really quite a huge, huge problem, which is all design. <laughs> if it's too hard, let a committee do it. It's all design, and everything we do is on behalf of the residents, and I insist. On that. <laughs> and the money, bless you. Some things on their hands, I think. I have to look round to see. Do you see that? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
government borrows, it shout the loudest.